So good morning, everybody, and welcome to the channel. As always, thanks for stopping in and hanging out for a couple. My name is Rich. I'm the channel host. And if you didn't know, normally we're covering a variety of drone topics, building our own small drone business, getting out there and actually doing the applications in the field and sharing what we're doing with you here on channel. So today I wanted to talk about using a loft and the Lance system, the low altitude authorization and notification system that's out there for those of us who might be flying in controlled airspace. And when we're flying in controlled airspace, we need to make sure that we put our Lance requests in. And oftentimes some of the Lance requests, if we're further out from, from the airport, then we can actually get quick turnaround on the Lance request. And then if we're really close to airports um, in their zero feet AGL, zero feet above ground level areas, we have to do a little bit more in getting our Lance requests accepted and then setting up our flights for our client locations. So I always dread the calls. Um, you'll, I'll get a call from someone who's building a new home near the airport because um, we got a lot of new construction there and they're in zero AGL because that means that I have to do an application through the Lance system through a loft and it's going to be a slower turnaround time. It's not going to be super quick. When we're looking at the FAA's grid around the airport, we'll see areas with 400 and 300 and 200 and 100. Those areas we can usually get permission pretty quickly through the Lance system and through a loft. But when we get to the zero feet AGL, that's where it takes a little more time and they need to spend a little time reviewing our requests and making sure that we're gonna be safe to fly in that area. So what we're looking at right now on screen is QGIS, uh, GIS application that I use for helping me to plan some of my flight missions. And this is the property that we're talking about. This is like a two acre property at tops. It is on the back side of, there's a hill right here and another hill right here. So the probability that you know, any flights would be coming right through in here is pretty low. We do see them out on location when we've gone to survey location before. And so, you know, with the proximity to KPRC and the fact that it's got several flight schools there, there's always a good bit of air traffic. So I got the contact from this client. The client gave me the address and they said, hey, can you fly this for us? We'd like to have this as a regular flight, probably twice a month, because we want to document our new home being built. So I totally get that. Now I've got an iPad in my hands here, because what we're going to do is I'm going to pull the iPad up really quick. And we're going to take a look at a loft really fast, okay? So we're going to do screen mirroring here. We're going to go to the Mac Mini, because uh, that's what we're on screen with right now. So we're just waiting for the Mac Mini to go ahead and connect up. And there we go. I'm going to minimize. I'm going to go ahead and minimize here um, that QGIS screen. We're just coming in to my iPad only. Under my drone tab, this is where most of my drone tools are. And as you'll see down here in the lower left hand corner, this is my sign in for a loft. Now, right away, it brings me into the loft application and we can see our controlled airspace around here. So we do have a good bit of it. But like I said, around KPRC, there's areas with 400s, 300s, 200s. Normally, if you put in a request today, you're going to get a response today so long as you're flying below their recommended altitudes here. We will also see on here these area areas right in and around the airport that, in fact, are in zero AGL. So zero AGL, if I were to go out there, put in a Lance application right now and sit and wait in my truck, I'm most likely not going to be seeing this. The second thing is we also have to unlock our DJI Mavic 2 Pro that we're going to be using there because right now it believes that it's zero AGL. So not only do we have to do this Lance request afterward, we needed to go to DJI's FlySafe and request an unlock code, which I'll show you momentarily. But first, I just want to zoom in here and see. So as you can see on here, we do have a um, our Lance requests in here. So this is the area we'd be flying. Aloft actually makes this nice little block for you when you're selecting an area. And then if I go down here, let's just take a look. I'm going to tap on maps. Okay. And on maps, I'm going to go back up to 
five one eight. Let's five one eight four. And this was five one eight four iron stone. There we go. So here we are at our location now at 5184 Iron Stone, you see down in the left hand corner. I'm going to tap on that. So KPRC Class D. What I want you to see here is so normally permissible altitude for authorization is zero feet AGL. So that's right under the word airspace there. And right below that, I have a Lance authorization that I recently received. Um, that's going to be starting in a day. Well, actually a day and some change. So uh, on that one, I can tap the more and we can see. So my name is in here, the requested elevation. We're actually going to be flying at 70 feet AGL, not 100. We don't need to fly at 100. We have our start time on April uh, 13th and we have an end time on April 13th as well. For me here in Arizona, I have to pay more attention to this because take a look at the the time, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. We're currently not on Mountain Standard Time here in Arizona. We don't change our clocks for daylight savings. So that is 8 a.m. our time. So that's one thing I always have to watch out for. I don't know how closely anyone's watching that, but I always have to keep in mind during the summertime with my Lance requests that, um, that the time information is not quite accurate. But so there we go. I have an approval from the Lance system from the FAA that will be flying that area. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that down. And I had another one below it. And I've also set up a third because we're going to be doing multiple flights for this particular client. But after I get the Lance authorization, I'm not done. Okay. I need to go to DJI's fly safe and I need to get that unlock code. And so I need the information here on my iPad um, and on screen. I need the information from Aloft that I got sent to me via text and via email. They sent me an email as well. So I've got some information that I need to share on uh, DJI's FlySafe. So let's go ahead and let's pull this down. We're going to stop that mirroring right there. There we go. And... I'm just closing this out here. There we go. So the next step here is going to be where did Firefox go. There's Firefox. So my next step in the process was going to DJI's fly safe. And so we've got a bunch of a bunch of different information here. So they're trying to sell me something while I'm trying to get into fly safe. So when you go to DJI.com slash fly safe, there is an unlock a zone button here for you. Okay. And then that's going to pull in your login and password for DJI. My login is successful here. And so just this morning, I put in an unlock request, new unlock request um, with DJI, and they've accepted it. So now I have the unlock code available for my drone. So my next step later is going to be taking the drone outside, taking the props off of it, because I'm also in an area that I can't fly right now at the office. So I always just pop the props off when I'm doing stuff or loading things or updating firmware. So the next step that I'm going to take is going to be to connect to the drone. In the drone, I'm going to go down to where I can do the unlock code. I'm going to synchronize my drone with DJI, and then I'm going to select my unlocked zone here. So I've got my information. I had to put my device information um, into this as well. So I actually have two different drones on this FlySafe account, and both of them are Mavic 2s. One of them one of them's a little older, one of them is newer. But in the case of this one, this is the older drone that we're using with this one. And this is going to be on 4.13.22. So that's just in two days for me. So now that I have my accepted, so if you wanted to do a new unlock request, uh, this is where you'd click it right here. You'd be providing a little bit of information, your information, your phone number, um, the altitude you're going at, and your device's ID as well. So once you've got all that done, um, the turnaround time on this to, for me today, uh, since I just added this one, uh, I think was about two hours time and it was accepted. So I'm all set to do this flight there for my client. 
and we're going totally legal here, which we always do at AZ Drum. So I will not fly zero AGL um, without going through this property. Um, we do follow the FAA guidelines very closely because we want to stay in business. So, you know, always follow the rules, everybody, so that you too can stay in business. Because it sure would be bad if, you know, we do some kind of flight or screw something up to the point where we can't do this anymore. It's an enjoyable business. I have a lot of fun with it. I also have a lot of fun sharing this with you. So if you have any further questions on this, um, if you have questions about a loft or the process, leave uh, those questions and comments down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. In the meantime, I hope you all have a great start to the week. And we're getting ready for a couple of jobs this week, including one of the jobs where I had to do this unlock code and do the Lance request to fly in a zero AGL area. And I've been approved for 100 feet above ground level. So all exciting there. All right, everyone, we'll see you again in an upcoming video. And I hope you have a great start to the week.